Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, today is Tuesday, January 2nd. It is a new year, and uh, we'll start this meeting by introducing you to your City Council. Council members Kylie? Here. Neitzert? Here. Rolfing? Here. Selberg? Here. Starr? Here. Staley? Here. Erickson? Here. Erpenbach? Here. Councilors, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. And we also thank uh, Dr. Ron Tyler. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of our elected city council. My name is Mike Fodness. My wife, Christine, and I leased the three-bedroom loft above the Copper Lounge until December 2nd, 2016. That morning, our home and our legs came crashing down. Our daughter, Emily, was buried alive beneath tons of rubble. We thought our beautiful girl was dead. Unfortunately, Holton construction worker Ethan McMahon did perish. Let that sink in. What, what if Emily was your daughter? What if Ethan was your son? We have been silent publicly during this past year regarding this horrific and preventable collapse of the Copper Lounge building. We have done so in deference to the McMahon family's loss of Ethan. They will forever remain in our thoughts and prayers. However, when this body voted to partner with Aaron Holtgren and Legacy Development on a $50 million parking ramp and hotel project, we were bewildered, angry, and frustrated. Not only was my city failing to call the people responsible for nearly killing my daughter to answer for their actions, it is now partnering with them in a venture that stands to make them significant money especially when Aaron Holtgren was listed as a personal guarantor with his partners Norm Drake, Larry Canfield, and Dr. Paul Sink. This is the same Aaron Holtgren and company that, one, on December 10th, 2016, stated in a letter to our community, Holtgren Construction will accept responsibility if it is, if it is determined we are responsible. The fact is, OSHA found Holtgren willfully guilty, but he has appealed. The second fact is the United States Department of Justice has opened a criminal investigation on Mr. Holtgren. <coughs> Two, through his construction company, Mr. Holtgren put at risk his employees, my family, and our entire community by illegally removing asbestos-laden materials from the Copper Lounge site and recklessly transporting dangerous materials through our city and into our landfill. Fact, Holtgren, along with Norm Drake, successfully claimed insolvency and skated on the $20,000 fine levied by the state of South Dakota. Fact, the city could have imposed a $500 fine but chose not to. They didn't act. My family was not informed that we were exposed to potential cancer-causing asbestos, not by Holtgren Construction, nor by Legacy, nor by CLP LLC, nor by Boomerang LLC, nor by Olympia LLC, nor by any other shell company that Norman Aaron wished to create, nor by the state, and most troubling, not even my own city of Sioux Falls. Is this really who we want to be in bed with for the next 80 years? If it is, then we as voters must look to make the appropriate changes come election day. Mr. Mayor and council members as lifelong residents, it was Chris and my dream to live in the heart of this city. That dream has turned into a nightmare for my family. Our family lost everything material and sentimental that we ever owned. Our lives were turned upside down. My daughter almost died. She'll have to deal with her injuries and PSD for years to come. It's a day I'll never forget. I believe it's a day our entire community should not forget very soon. I strongly encourage the council to reconsider getting further involved with a developer 
who is associated with criminal and OSHA investigations, illegal dumping of asbestos, failure to pay fines assessed by the state, and a complete failure to address the harm caused by victims of the building collapse. To date, we have not seen any headway in them making good on their promises. It's been a year. It's been 13 months. Nothing. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Welcome. Hello. Welcome. God. Happy New Year. <coughs> no one responds here? Okay, my name is Clara Hart. I live on Keelin Place. I just have a, a brief remark, actually. Um, my wish this evening, as we start the new year, is that we all, not just me, all of us, we should strive to be transparent and decisions that we make, all of us, should be the same as those decisions you make in your own home. Thank you, and thank you for your service. Thank you, Clara. Folks, anybody else? 28. Item 28 is to set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, January 9th, 2018 at 7 p.m. First reading. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, the City, repealing ordinance number 11917, authorizing the issuance of its sales tax revenue bonds and other actions related thereto. Jim? Councilor Staley? Good evening. Um, first of all, let me say uh, to the community that uh, I want to make it very clear. I do not oppose downtown development nor do I oppose uh, expanded parking downtown, affordable, accessible apart, uh, parking options for our community. Um, but my first priority is to always protect the citizens and the taxpayers. Since December 5th, uh, when we had our vote on this parking ramp, we've had some, some new developments happening. And Jim, if you would put some of these things on the overhead please. I, I want to say I'm grateful to the Argus leader because I think they've done some very powerful investigative work and uh, Tony if you could get that on our screen so we can see it as well thank you. Okay so we, we first of all December 19th we have collapse under criminal investigation. Go, keep going Jim. Building collapse probe, Hultgren not fined by city for asbestos violations. That article showed up. Next one, please. Guarantors of 50 million project couldn't pay fine for illegal dumping. <coughs> Top city officials in dark on asbestos violations. And then two accused companies claimed insolvency. State company illegally removed dumped asbestos. Different owners shared same address and manager. And last week, investigation prompts parking ramp repeal efforts. So in light of the recent developments concerning the guarantors of legacy development and facing the possibility of criminal charges that many, many questions, as and we've heard people talk today, I, I want to say I'm deeply grateful to, to Mr. Fodness for coming up and speaking. Thank you so much. And I know we all feel for you. Um, with all, we feel for all the families. Councilor Starr and I are going to bring an ordinance tonight to repeal the funding of the project. I've been working with uh, our city attorney's office to craft the wording for this ordinance. Uh, we are well within our legal right with, on the council to put, us, to put the brakes on this thing. 
And, and I noticed on the Argus's website as I was coming here tonight that six, at, at that time, six of the mayoral candidates were weighing in on our side. Jim Entiment, Jolene Lutcher, Greg Jameson, David Zakaitis, Mike Gunn, Kenny Anderson, and I'm sure other, the other ones, I, I know some of them would, would feel the same way. So th this is not a life or death issue here. Uh, I believe it is in the best interest of our community, of our citizens, to, to lay this down. This is the first reading, people. That means we, we have one or two weeks to, to consider this, to think it through, for the sake of our community, to say, is this really, do we need to go forward with this right now, or do we, maybe we can wait. And, and not that a, a public-private partnership can't work, but this thing is just very problematic for me personally. So that uh, that's why I'm bringing this forward. And Councillor Starr was supporting me in that, and I appreciate that. Uh, Council Vice Chair Erickson. Um, I just have a couple questions, not for um, the councillors that brought this, but for either our attorneys or Director um, Ketchum, or even Matt Nelson, maybe Director, if you want to maybe come up. Um, one, I want to ask the the first question I want to ask is what is a what is the personal guarantee? What does that mean? The the Darren Ketchum, Community Development Director, City of Sioux Falls. That personal guarantee is something that beyond the uh, limited liability company that exists in this case, um, the personal uh, owners of the company, so Norm Drake, Larry Canfield, Paul Sanker, and Holcren, are personally guaranteeing. So penetrating through that that corporate veil to them privately to deliver this project. So if something were to not go as planned and there's an issue at the limited liability company level, we have the ability to go to them as individuals to force the, the completion of the project and deliver it as agreed to in the documents. And it's my understanding that's really different than other contracts we have or or things in place. The other question I want to ask you is what is Village River Green Excuse me, Village River Group LLC. This is public knowledge. It was formed um, before I, I before you answer that, please. Um, one of the things that, as I started reading the the document uh, and going through this, um, one of the the things that happens often is assignments, an assumption agreement, and a transfer. Um, I'm going to just read this a little bit and maybe have um, Danny or Darren. Um, help educate us on this a little bit more because it was pretty complex and it's taken me several phone calls and email exchanges to try to understand. Item 28 is to set a data hearing and second reading for Tuesday, January 9th, 2018 at 7 p.m. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, the City, repealing ordinance number 119.17, authorizing the issuance of its sales tax revenue bonds and other actions related thereto. Jim, Councilor Steely. Good evening. Um, first of all, let me say uh, to the community that uh, I want to make it very clear. I do not oppose downtown development, nor do I oppose uh, expanded parking downtown, affordable, accessible apart, uh, parking options for our community. Um, but my first priority is to always protect the citizens and the taxpayers. Since December 5th, uh, when we had our vote on this parking ramp, we've had some, some new developments happening. And Jim, if you would put some of these things on the overhead, please. I, I want to say I'm grateful to the Argus leader because I think they've done some very powerful investigative work. And uh, Tony, if you could get that on our screen so we can see it as well, thank you. Okay, so we, we first of all, December 19th, we have collapse under criminal investigation. Go, keep going, Jim. Building collapse probe, Hulkrin not fined by city for asbestos violations. That article showed up. Next one, please. Guarantors of 50 million project couldn't pay fine for illegal dumping.
top city officials in dark on asbestos violations and then two accused companies claimed insolvency state company illegally removed dumped asbestos Different owners share the same address and manager. And last week, investigation prompts parking ramp repeal efforts. So in light of the recent developments concerning the guarantors of legacy development and facing the possibility of criminal charges, that many, many questions, as and we've heard people talk today, I, I want to say I'm deeply grateful to, to Mr. Fodness for coming up and speaking. Thank you so much. And I know we all feel for you. Um, with all, We feel for all the families. Councilor Starr and I are going to bring an ordinance tonight to repeal the funding of the project. I've been working with uh, our city attorney's office to craft the wording for this ordinance. Uh, we are well within our legal right with, on the council to put, us, to put the brakes on this thing. And, and I noticed on the Argus's website as I was coming here tonight that six, at, at that time, six of the mayoral candidates were weighing in on our side. Jim Entiment, Jolene Letcher, Greg Jameson, David Zakaitis, Mike Gunn, Kenny Anderson, and I'm sure other, the other ones, I, I know some of them would, would feel the same way. So th this is not a life or death issue here. Uh, I believe it is in the best interest of our community, of our citizens, to, to lay this down. This is the first reading, people. That means we, we have one or two weeks to, to consider this, to think it through, for the sake of our community, to say, is this really, do we need to go forward with this right now, or do we, maybe we can wait. And, and not that a, a public-private partnership can't work, but this thing is just very problematic for me personally. So that, uh, that's why I'm bringing this forward. And Councillor Starr was supporting me in that, and I appreciate that. Uh, Council Vice Chair Erickson. Uh, yeah, Councillor Starr. Thank you. I had a huge presentation tonight to do, but after Mr. Fodness is uh, coming forward after a year of silence, I would move to set a date of hearing for item 29 for January 16th, 2018. Them. Well, I'm, I'm going to, I, I, well, I mean, I, I might second that, but I, I will have to second, a, a second it. Okay, right. I'll second it. But I, I have There's to. been a motion uh, to set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, January 9th uh, for this particular item. Comes for start. 16th. The 16th, okay. Was the motion? The 16th, very good. Comes for start. Did you have any questions or any comments? No, it's uh, just time to move forward with this. I, like I said, I had a long presentation, and very I think good. we all know where we're headed. Thank you, Councillor Starr. Thank you. Councillor Neisser. Thank you. Councillor Neisser. Thank you. Um, yeah, why don't you put it up there? I, I, I had some prepared remarks. I, I'm going to throw them out as well. Um, you know, I just want to say that I, I give it, he's got that up. I, I've spent the last week working up working this up so I could kind of talk this thing through. I, I'm not even gonna, gonna bother. I, I just wanna say that, you know, it, it's really frustrating that I'm running around here on Christmas week trying to get all this stuff together and we're putting ourselves out there and we're getting beaten over the head about this deal. Um, because there's a lot of details that people need to know and um, I, I just wish the administration would be out, on, out front on this and, and be talking about the details of why this is this is different i mean the average person is saying to me why are you doing business with x and i'm trying to explain how this works and, and i'm going i just it's it's just frustrating uh going it going it alone can you go to the other the other one for me so i'm not going to go through this but the whole point is is that we have a different developer we have top-notch builders all that stuff um and then we have all of these protections for the city that are in the contract. This is this is so difficult because it's it's very hard to sit in a, and explain all of these details. Um, um, it, and obviously, Mr. Fodness, frankly, makes what I would call 
a, a moral argument, which is very powerful. So, um, I, I just wish that we were we were just we would get those details out there rather than trying to just punch it through. Thank you. Before I go back, Councilor Steele. Oh, Darren Kitchen, would you come back up, please? And then also Jim David, would you? I want you to put the the names up, please. So, um, you know, it's interesting because so often on these issues we get phone calls from people. I've had businessmen calling me with great concerns about this project and, and people who know a lot more about the financial implications uh, and c contractual um, details than I do. And, and you know what's what's kind of frustrating about that is that these people come to me and Cal I'm sure they call my... Did, I, you, I, did you need to... I will, I will, I'm getting to that. Okay. And I'm just going to say that um, these people are telling me things and I say, why don't you come forward and say this? And you know what I've heard people say to me? I can't do it because I will lose my livelihood if I speak out against the city. That in itself is problematic. And so they put it on me to, to try to, to bring this forward and I get like my three minutes to speak. But one of the things that a, uh, someone brought up is they said, ask them, have all of these guarantors, and that would include Aaron Holcren, who is you apparently are now removing from the equation. This is the first I've heard about this. But have all did Aaron Holcren and Norm Drake did they sign a personal financial statement certified true and accurate of their net worth before we took them on? Uh, Councillor Stanley, we looked at uh, financial verification that was provided through their financial institution. So they signed a fi so Aaron Holcren told you he had the ability to. to to come on board before that 30 million. Oh, I would say that they didn't sign exactly what you're providing. They provided a letter of financial reference from a uh, local financial institution and that, stating that and, and you know, to deliver this okay. project. The whole thing also comes back to my in initial concern was that we don't get to know who the investors are. And now we're shifting things around to say, well, it's going to be this person and then this person. And when something gets so complicated that we need to have a flow chart to show us why our community needs to get on board with this, something is wrong. I'm and I've, there are conversations that happen behind the scenes and you say, I'm satisfied because so-and-so told me this behind the scenes. And then I say, we've got to be able to say this to our public, that this is why we're going forward with this. And at the end of the day, the RFQ was decided by a group of people, would you put that up please, the group of people who came together who said, this is how we're going to do this. We've chosen legacy, and, and Dar Darren Ketchum, Tom Huber, city employees, Brett O'Neill, city employee, Mel Matt Nelson, city employee, Kendra was a city employee, Joe Batchelor, downtown Sioux Falls, and Councilor Christine Erickson. They, the, again, a, a, a confidential group coming together, looking over the, all the options and coming up with legacy development. So I don't know that this is a thing that we, we can't set aside. Maybe it is going to be a legacy, but I think it's. I think we need to just take a breather and and set this down. A roll call, please. Council members, Kylie. No. Night, sir. Yes. Rolfing? No. Selberg? No. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. Erickson? No. Erpenbach? No. That is failed three to five. Item 20, uh, do we have to do 29? 29. Item 29 is set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, January 9th, 2018. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, the City, repealing ordinance number 12017, authorizing the Mayor to enter into a development agreement between the City of Sioux Falls and Legacy Development and Consulting Company LLC and other actions related thereto. Councilor Sandy. But And once again, this was partnering up with the thing that was just voted down, which I, I just feel so sorry for our citizens. Did Councilor that, Sandy, did you want to make a motion on I, this particular? I would move that we uh, approve this. To the same date, uh, January yes. 16th? Yes, I Very good. That is died for lack Second. of a sec. Second. Uh, Councilor Starr, very good. Uh, any discussion? A roll call vote, please. Council members Kiley? No. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? No. Selberg? No. Starr? Yes. 
Staley? Yes. Erickson? No. Erpenbach? No. That has failed three to five. Item 30. Mr. Starr, any uh, comments? Councilor Ruffin? I, uh, I, I believe Councilor Staley may have a wrong fact. Um, I think the plurality for the governor and for legislatures is during the primary or even in the uh, um, inside the parties, uh, not on the general election. And uh, I believe that the jobs that we do um, are, I believe the jobs that- Hang, hang on there with Mr. Denson, I would just kindly ask that you be respectful of the body. Uh, you've, been, you, you've been disrespectful of the body throughout the, the proceedings for probably the last half hour. Um, I would just, you know, these folks have been respectful to you. I would just kindly ask you to be respectful, and, and if you can't, um, you know, we, we'd ask you to, to kindly leave. Thank you, Mr. Danielson. I, I appreciate that. Councilor? It's really hard not to say something, but I, I'll withdraw. Don't, don't just continue on. Um, the, um, I brought this because I think majority is the important important and the right way to do this um we've been it's been proven we've looked at that since 2000 we would have only had one additional election that would have cost the taxpayers money and i think that's a small price to pay to have um uh, the dog wagging rather than a tail wagging the dog uh and that's what happens when we're um when we're elected by 34 percent i didn't feel right as i said when i was elected by less than 50 percent um, felt much better about the mandate uh, for going into my second term when it was about 65%. Um, and so I, I would urge uh, a no vote on this. I can give you a hundred other reasons, folks, but those are the main ones. And if somebody else has something to add, that's fine.